not a bad start to the morning. We've only been here about two minutes. First bait. We've got a little um, channel out here in front of us. Called the smoker. It's hooked up to a ray, guys. The sun's just coming up. I love fishing this time of day. This little channel starting to fill up, so that wave's broken out there. Derek's hooked up. Welcome to Real Kiwi Fishing. This week I'm up Murawai. Got my mate Derek. We've just come up to spend the day up Murawai. Pretty much coming into February. I don't do a lot of fishing through that January, February, but um, got a small swell, just under a meter. And I thought, hey, why not? Let's head up Murawai and get a line wet. So um, yeah, we're just up Murawai. Going to try for some um, trebs. Obviously Kahawai, and we might even get some snapper in the Arvo. What we've done is we've got a high tide around that 9 o'clock, 9.30. So we've come up early and we're going to fish through that high tide. That high tide is really hard to fish sometimes up Murawai. So we thought we'd come up, fish through the high tide, and then set up for the Arvo and fish the low tide on the banks. So I'm um, not expecting too much in the way of um, snapper this time of day like it is nice and early morning but that tide's not really how i like to fish middle for snapper i like fishing it on that low tide but um hey might luck one this morning but uh hope we get on to a few in the arvo and hope we get a few fish through the day pretty much getting bites straight away guys derek's maybe hooked up not too sure Looks like he's got a, something little, maybe a little kahawai. Sun's just coming up. Yeah, kahawai. Which isn't too bad. We actually want some fresh kahawai in case those snapper come on the bite. But also Derek loves smoking kahawai, so not a bad start to the morning. We've only been here about two minutes. First bait. Sun's just coming up. Nice big kawai. Woo! It's a big. For the smoker. Go. Nice big kahawai. And the sun's just coming up. Love fishing this time of day. Be nice if that low tide was about now. But uh, like I was saying, we've got it in the Arvo. So uh, not too bad for us. Like I was saying before too, it's quite hard to fish Murawai on that high tide, trying to find holes and stuff. We've got a little um, channel out here in front of us. It's probably like a, um, a bank on the outside, which we would be fishing on the low tide. It's breaking out there on that bank, and then in between the bank and probably 20 meters in front of us is another little bank. So we're actually fishing in between that little bank and that big outer bank. There's a little channel. It's running all the way up here. We thought we'd try here. It's a little bit of a rip, so I know there's nice current there. It's probably pulling a lot of food around. There'll be bait fish and all sorts in there. So that's that's why we're fishing here. And that channel sort of goes up there and it actually moves into a real nice hole further up there. But I thought we'd start here. If we don't get any joy, we'll move up there. It's probably about maybe half a K further up the beach there. But uh, we'll try here, see, see what happens. Give it a good maybe half an hour to an hour. And if we're only catching kawai, we'll move up. 
try and find some Trevelli or something. It's hooked up to a ray, guys. Get a lot of rays along the beach. Up middle right here. Like I always say, when you catch them, don't leave them on the beach. Try and get your hook out and let them go. And the easiest thing to do is get them on their backs. Calms them down a bit. And it's easier to get the hook out. It's easy as that, hooks out. Tide's coming in. So I'll just leave him there. We'll see if we can get him away. There he goes, guys. He's away. So you get a lot of those, you know, a lot of stingrays on the beach and like I was saying, you know, don't just leave them on the beach to die. Get them on their backs, get the hook out, flip them back over and they can get away nice and easy. Go and bait up. Getting quite a few bites. Maybe a couple of little snapper bites actually. Not too sure, might be Trevelli. I think Derek might be hooked up again. Just hoping for a little bit smaller Kahawai for bait. We probably won't use the Kahawai, um, yeah, that's better, that's perfect. Bait! You poke. Probably won't use um, Kawai until this, we're getting snapper. What's going to happen is we're going to use the Kawai. It's going to sit for a lot, lot longer if the snapper aren't there, and then the um, you've got a chance, bigger, better chance of catching stingray because your bait's in there longer. So I normally don't use Kawai until the snapper on the bite. So you'll see here now. Tide's coming in, this little channel's starting to fill up, so that wave's broken out there. The big one behind it was on the bank, and the one before it is starting to disappear. It's bubbled. Now that one that broke further out is coming in now. It's bubbling away, it's going to disappear. So we're fishing in this nice little channel. It actually runs right up there. You'll see it's not much wave action up there. Got that outer bank breaking. And what we're hoping is the fish are going to come in further up there in that, that deeper hole and just mooch up through here, through this little channel. Got quite a lot of current running through here. It's like a little rip sort of running over here. But you'll see it now, it's quite calm right there in, in that little middle patch. See that wave disappeared out there? So we're only fishing about, that, that little channel is about 60 metres in front of us. So that's the thing, people always think when you're out on the west coast you've got to cast 100, 120, 30 metres. Find those little holes that are close in, you don't have to. If we moved up to that hole up there, you'll notice the waves that sort of go out like that, a little bit up there. We would have to get wet, would have to walk out probably that sort of 50, 60 metres to, to make that that hole and that's why we're fishing here it's come in closer here so the little channels in close here and then as it moves up that beach it, it moves outwards into the into the hole 
here it's actually chucked on a um, chucked on some car wire that little car wire on that rod down there so we'll actually have a look and see if that theory is right we're not getting a lot of snapper bites he might end up with a car wire on it but if there's not a lot of bite action you'll we'll see what happens we'll see if he hooks up on a stingray that's why I don't normally fish car wire baits until the fish are on the bite because it's going to sit out there longer and it's just going to have that chance of stingrays to come by and, and grab it so once once you've got your um, fresh car wire baits save it for when the fish come on the bite you know I'd, I'd, I'd probably be using it more on that low tide when we're on that outer bank or that bank fishing in between that bank and the outer bank because I know it's a lot deeper it's a real nice thick chunky channel that fish will run up and down in there but we're getting a few little nibbles little bites here and there but um, it's a thing that, that and I keep going on but that high tide is quite hard to fish you've got to find that perfect little hole that little channel that fish are going to come in and mooch in there because there's no the fish are going to sit out in that outer bank if there's food out there they're not going to come into these little channels there's no need to but if you can find that right hole that right channel is a little bit deeper overhead height not too much turbulence fish will come in there and mooch in there you just got to find them Derek's hooked up <laughs> to a stingray or if we're lucky maybe a kingfish That's that, uh, that car wire bait he was using. Like I was saying, the boats have actually slowed down, sun's up now. So our baits are just sitting out there a lot longer. And especially car wire. <laughs> Now I know you get a lot of questions about, well not questions but a lot of guys saying that they can't detect the fish, they don't know when they're getting the bites and you'll notice my rod is shaking every now and then. You'll get used to that. That's more the wave coming in, hitting the line or dragging the line and then it releases the stretch so the rod's going down and then comes up, gets pulled down, up. The best thing to do is if you're losing bait, so you actually are getting bites in between that little pool and you're not sure when it's happening, the best thing to do is just to come up and put your finger on the line. Now I can feel I can feel all that pull, the pings of the line. If you get your other hand and then pull the line like that, like a bite, you'll feel the difference on your finger. So the pulls, the twangs, I can feel that on my finger, but also if you do like a bite like that, you can actually feel that. It's a totally different feel. So if you're losing your bait and you don't know when the bites are happening, just stand there for five, ten minutes with your finger on the line and you'll feel those bites. They're, they're really you'll know the difference, you'll, you'll feel the pings and the pulls like I was saying but you'll feel the rattles and the, and the heavier bites, you'll feel it through your finger so losing bait and you're not sure why and when and what's going on just stand there with your finger on, on that line and you will feel those bites as soon as you feel them, right out of the holder, get ready Okay guys, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little bit of a shift, it's gone really quiet, um, 
they're not taking the pulchard and I thought what might have happened is that tide came over that outer bank and filled up that little channel I thought we might have got on to a few fish it's actually gotten quite quiet so what we're gonna do is just pack up I'm gonna drive a little bit further north probably should have headed down there a little bit earlier this morning there's some um, deeper holes and like I was saying the further you go along the beach the better the fishing sort of becomes it is quite hard during the day like this sun's up it's quite calm well no wind just a swell rolling so um, fishing like anywhere can get quite difficult to fish on conditions like this but sometimes if you move further north fish a couple of those closer holes might pick up a trev and then we're hoping in that like I was saying that late evening we'll um, get onto that outer bank it's about four o'clock so we should be able to get on that bank around that half two three fish for a couple of hours hopefully pick up a couple of snaps maybe even another couple of trevs if we get onto them down here but yeah we'll pack up and just do a little bit of a shift first baked bites bang fish on 